Did Adam and Noah really live to be over 900 years old, as claimed by the book of Genesis in the Bible? Well, the Christian fundamentalist claims they have historical documents and science that proves it's true. Stay tuned and we'll investigate to see if these claims have any validity whatsoever. We all know the story of Adam and Eve, the first two people created by God himself. The two responsible for the fall of man because they just had to have a bite of that apple. Now most of us reasonable and rationally minded people discount this story as a fable because that's what it is. But the Christian fundamentalist holds on to this tale as well as the tale of Noah and the Great Flood. And part of this myth, which they claim is not a myth at all, because the Bible is the infallible word of God, is that Adam lived to be 930 years old and Noah about 950 years. And it's bad enough that somebody with even a rudimentary education would hold on to this preposterous anti-reason, but then they try to propagate their so-called evidence to back their worldview and belief system. I read one, which I linked as a source, although it doesn't look like it's a very reliable source, that states the first humans could have lived over 900 years because the Earth was encompassed by a vapor canopy that disappeared after the Great Flood. I've read one preposterous hypothesis that I didn't even bother to put in in research because it's so ridiculous that states possibly a high cheese diet was what resulted in their longevity. But the Christian fundamentalist tries to manipulate and twist anything to force it to match the Bible. And they'll do this historically and so-called scientifically, and neither are valid. The number one defense that most apologists will use historically are the writings of a man named Josephus quoted from his works, Antiquities of the Jew. And this is the quote, God afforded the ancients a longer time of life on account of their virtue and good use as they made of it in astronomical and geometrical discoveries, which would not have afforded the time of foretelling unless they had lived 600 years. That's one of the quotes that Mr. Josephus has explaining the longevity of people in the time of Noah and Adam. First of all, it is widely debated what Josephus did and didn't say. Much of his writings have been altered depending on who you read. Second, not only was Josephus not around during the time of Noah or Adam, these writings were composed almost a century after Jesus Christ died. There were many people of notable character who said many things regarding many gods, which nobody would take literally today. You can go back and look at Socrates. Socrates has quoted many things about the gods, including them coming down into the mountains and interacting with man. These are people that believe the sun revolved around the earth and was only 20 miles away. There is absolutely no validity whatsoever in taking a quote from Josephus, if we can even prove he said that, and trying to use it to prove that Adam and Noah lived to be over 900 years. But if the Christian fundamentalist can't get his point across historically, then he'll add in pseudoscience to try to confirm his belief system. And in this case, there was a former atheist turned Christian named John Sanford, a relatively well-known plant geneticist, who has used his research to try to prove that humans did indeed live to be almost a thousand years old back in ancient times. I have scoured the internet to try to find if this John Sanford was actually a Christian fundamentalist or evangelist, and I couldn't confirm that, but if he's a creationist, I've never known a creationist who wasn't. But his theory was put forth, and the Institute for Creation Research jumped on it. He rejects the idea of natural selection and states that the theory of natural selection is indefensible. Basically what he states, and my sources are in the description, if you want to cure that insomnia one night and read about it, is that every generation has about a hundred different new mutations, and that most of these new mutations are what he calls neutral or have a slightly negative effect. Essentially, as generations continue, these slightly deteriorating mutations will cause a general decline in our fitness. And he uses what he calls the Kimura Curve, which is named after the famous Japanese biologist, Dr. Kimura. And their general consensus with the Institute of Creation Research states that after the flood, the environment of the planet changed, allowing these deteriorating mutations to occur, 
which explains on a graph that the Institute of Creation Research just basically came up with, showing why Noah lived to be 950 years old, and by the time the generations got to Abraham, we were at about 200 years of lifespan, and have continued to dwindle since. And they rely on this Dr. Kimura's mutation distribution over time. Well, the funny thing is, before Dr. Kimura died, he did not agree with John Sanford at all. He flat out stated that's not what his curve was saying. Dr. Kimura was basically challenging the theory of natural selection because of the magnitude of the evolutionary observable changes. He did not in any way conclude that the longevity of lifespan had decreased from almost a thousand years to under a hundred. He simply stated he thought that these mutations occurred more randomly, what he describes as genetic drift, versus say the theory of natural selection. And the Christian fundamentalists took this and twisted it to their worldview. But that's not the only problem with John Sanford's ridiculous theory. We have the ability today to study the DNA and sequencing in the ancient fossils of primitive peoples. We can also study the characteristics of the fossilized bones to determine age. Much like you can tell the difference between an 80-year-old skeleton and that of a 21-year-old. We don't have one single fossil that remotely backs that someone lived to be almost a thousand years old. The Institute of Creation Research has taken John Sanford's work and formulated a declining graph showing the age of Noah, Abraham, and Moses. And we have absolutely no proof these people even existed, let alone the ability to date their fossilized bones. This is not a proof of anything. Dr. Kimura, the man that John Sanford based his work on, clearly stated that John Sanford misinterpreted his graphs. And this is my point here, because these pastors and these Christian fundamentalist churches are spewing this pseudoscience nonsense at the pulpit. And then this evangelist you run into is going to put forth this theory that you've never heard of because no one in the scientific community takes it seriously, and you're not going to know how to respond. Well, here's how you respond. It's another example of them taking something and twisting and manipulating it to prove their worldview. It is a delusional piece of nonsense that these cults hang on to because they don't have any actual science to hang their beliefs on. And I will bet a wooden nickel that Dr. John Sanford is at the very least linked with the evangelist and other Christian fundamentalist community. And as you can see, the Christian fundamentalist has misrepresented the facts once again. But if you'd like to read another work of fiction, and at least I admit it's fiction, a story of what I think the apocalypse would be like if Jesus Christ ever returned, check out my novel on Amazon, The Second Fall, guaranteed to offend the fundamentalist, and I'll see you next time as we use reason and reality to thrust that sword into the heart of ignorance.